Hello, everybody. It's good to be back with you today. Um, hope everyone's doing well, hanging in there, doing awesome, doing amazing, living the abundant life that Jesus wants you to be living. Um, hey, before we jump into the word, I want to make you aware of a couple things. Uh, number one is uh, next week, so a week from today, September 7th, it's our first Tuesday in September, we will have our first not our first, our next women's gathering. Um, you can come out, join us. We're going to have um, some worship, praise and worship, which is always fantastic. Um, Michaela Lowry will have a band for us. And then, um, man, you guys are going to be in for a treat. We have a special guest speaker, um, a good friend of mine. She is going to come. Her name is Gina Horner. Um, those of you that know Gina, she is full of joy. She is full of life. She is full of power. She will bring a good word and I promise you, you will laugh. You will laugh even at her laugh. Like her laugh is so contagious. She is hilarious. So make sure to get your friends, um, neighbors, family, anybody you want. And we will meet at the church, City Lights Church at 6 p.m. Tuesday, September 7th. We will meet in the main sanctuary there. Um, child care is provided and youth group will be going on. So there's really no reason, no excuse to not come. So make sure you come, mark your calendars for that. Um, secondly, the second announcement is um, then that the following Tuesday, so September 14th, we are going weekly with the women's group. Uh, we're gonna begin a nine week uh, Bible study on the gifts of the Spirit. And um, I'm really excited about this. It will be a live teaching. There's no book you need to purchase. We're not going to follow a book. The only book we're going to use is the Bible, which is a fantastic book. Um, and yeah, like I said, we'll do some live teachings. I'm going to teach a couple of them. Uh, Pastor Emily will teach a couple. Pastor Harmony will um, teach a couple. And then um, Let's see, Melinda, Pastor Melinda, she also will teach one, and Deb Klein. If anyone knows Miss Deb Klein, I love listening to this woman. She is powerful, she's anointed, she's an excellent teacher, and so um, I asked her to teach one as well. So we're going to have um, different teachers each week. There'll be about 20 to 25 minutes of a teaching, and then you will um, sign up for a table, and so you'll be with that table the whole semester. And then you guys can talk about it. Um, you'll have a table leader who will guide the discussion um, because we want to draw your input too. We want to draw your wisdom, your life experiences. It enriches everybody when that happens. So, um, so this is just another avenue for you to get plugged in, to have community, to meet friends. My best friends, even to this day, began in a MOPS group and a Bible study group. Um, it's sitting, again, in those round tables. We've talked about those. Pastor Emily is excellent at describing it. Really, like, we can sit in rows all day long and we can get a lot of head knowledge, but sitting in tables allows us to share and connect and to um, have life-giving friendships. And so I want to encourage you, do that. Get connected. You can be in multiple groups. If you already have something going on Thursday night still come on Tuesday night it is going to be so good so um, for that you can sign up next week at the gathering or you can also sign up online at citylights.church forward slash groups I said it last week and now I don't remember oh man I hope that's it but if you need any help email me and I will get the answer for you. How does that sound? Um, and then uh, you can also, yeah, you can sign up uh, next week at the gathering. And then the first night, September 14th, we will also, if you just kind of walk in, you're like, oh man, I really want to come. We'll get you plugged into a table. Um, we have some great leaders, uh, Jonna Backlin, Delma Long, uh, Kate Lindy, Anna Malone, um, Holly Bradley, and probably Christine Bino, Sharon Spicka, and uh, who else? Hannah. Hannah Hartman. Hannah Hartman's going to lead a table. Um, anyway, so really fantastic, fantastic people. Oh, and Bailey. I forgot. Sweet Bailey. She is precious. She's amazing. And um, anyway, she'll be leading a table as well. So lots of choices. And um, I just want to encourage you, get connected. It's going to be a really fun semester. I cannot wait. Um, I'm so excited for what the Lord has already done in the women's ministry. It's been pretty incredible over the last two and a half years. And just getting ready to 
go. Just continue to move forward. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this. So make sure you join us. This is going to be a really fun, precious time. Um, yeah, it'll be great. Okay, well, let's go ahead and jump into the word. I have something on my heart for you guys. Um, a couple weeks ago, about two or three weeks ago, when some of this stuff really started um, blowing up with Afghanistan, when um, we, we pulled our soldiers and their nation kind of got into an uproar, and, and um, man, we've had some things statewide that's been going on. I um, really started feeling in my spirit this urgency in prayer, and I didn't fully understand it. Um, actually, actually, it's it's multi-leveled, um, an urgency to pray for the lost, an urgency to spread the gospel, um, an urgency um, to pray for hunger right within the body, um, and an urgency for the love of Jesus to be poured out, an urgency for a revival, all these things. I'm, I'm not going to go through all those, but one of them was an urgency for prayer. It was almost like um, if there are different compartments in in your body, um, you know, like uh, maybe like an angel or or you know, Jesus in heaven or something is like, he'll push the emergency button in you. And all of a sudden, this thing that you've had in you, it rises to the forefront. And you just feel a sense of urgency, a sense of emergency to partner, to jump in and to begin like, and, and not even begin, but to continue, but to press in harder. And I really felt this in prayer. And so I want to spend at least two weeks talking about this. Um, because I feel like I ha I got some revelation in scripture um, about how powerful and effective our prayers really are. Um, you guys know me. I am such a visual um, learner. I guess if you don't know me, I just told you. I'm very visual. And, and the Lord created me this way. And I love that he speaks to me like this. And so when there is something that is pressing on me or whatever, the Lord's very good and kind and gracious to give me a visual of what actually is taking place. And so today, I, I want to just show you a small snapshot of, of what I feel like the Lord does in prayer and to really show us how powerful prayer is. Um, First Thessalonians 5.17, First Thessalonians 5.17 very short memory verse for you today. It says, pray continually. Pray continually. Get that one in your memory tank, right? First Thessalonians 5.17, pray continually. Some translations say pray without ceasing, but pray continually is shorter. So there you go. All right, very simple. So the if the Bible tells us to do this, then then praying should be something we are doing all the time right? But sometimes there's situations in life where you feel more of a pressure to press in, right? And I feel like we're in one of those times. I shared this at our pre-service meeting, um, a, a, again, like two or three weeks ago. And, and I, um, again, just trying to to present that um, that urgency in prayer and what really is taking place and that we need to partner with the Holy Spirit and really we have a duty, we have a duty to pray. So here we go, we're gonna, um, we're kinda gonna take a funny road to get to my point, but I want you to see what the Spirit, I believe the Spirit of God has shown me in like my own personal quiet time. Just kinda giving you guys some insight here. All right, in Exodus 30, um, the chapters before and the chapters following, God is giving Moses instruction on how he wants the earthly temple to look, what he, how he wants um, things built, every, every part of it. Now, why is God so specific on this? Okay, there's a reason. And that is because this earthly temple is supposed to replicate the, the spiritual is supposed to replicate the temple that is the kingdom of heaven, that's in the kingdom of heaven. And so really, um, God is very specific. He's like, Moses, I want it built this way. I want it to have this much gold and I want it to be this cubits long, this cubits wide, whatever, um, you know, and, and colors of fabric or whatever. So even though sometimes these chapters can almost feel exhausting to read through or like, 
you know, so, so detail oriented. You're like, oh my gosh, how can I get through this? If you can grasp on to the reason it's so detailed is because it actually looks I, the same way in heaven, we will be seeing this, this heavenly temple, this earthly temple gives us um, an example, it shows us what it's like. So there is one particular piece of this that I want us to hone in to today, and that is the altar of incense. Um, man, I think I'm going to go ahead and just read it. It's 10 verses, um, but I'm, I'm trying to also be cognitive of, of time because we, we got to get to where we're trying to go. Let's just read it. Okay, so Exodus 30 verses 1. is This is the Lord instructing Moses. He says, make an altar of acacia wood for burning incense. It is to be square, a cubit long, and a cubit wide, and two cubits high. It's horns of one piece with it. Overlay the top and all the sides and the horns with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. Make two gold rings for the altar below the molding two on each of um, opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Put the altar in front of the curtain that shields the Ark of the Covenant law before the atonement cover that is over the tables of the covenant law where I will meet with you. Okay, that's a, that's a really key point right there. This altar, God just described how to make it, and then he told him where to position it. And it is to go right in front of the Ark of the Covenant. That's the Ark of the Covenant that was described right there with the, the Ten Commandments and um, uh, the Atonement cover. All that stuff is part of the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant is where God's presence rested. So it's so important we see this. So the presence of God is right behind this altar of incense. Do you see how close this altar is to the presence of God? There's another altar, the burnt, the altar of, of burnt offering. Um, that's not in the same place. This one is in a strategic place and there's a reason why. Let's keep reading. Um, we're on verse seven. It says, Aaron must burn fragrant incense on the altar every morning when he tends the lamps. He must burn incense again when the lights of the lamps at twilight. So incense will burn regularly before the Lord for the generations to come. That still has not stopped. I'll show you why in a minute. Okay. Do not offer on this altar any other incense or burnt offering or grain offering, and do not pour a drink offering on it. Once a year, Aaron shall make atonement on its horns. This um, annual atonement must be made with the blood of the atoning sin offering and for the generations to come. Last sentence. It is most holy to the Lord. That last sentence says, it is most holy to the Lord. Some translations say, this altar, this one, is the most holy to the Lord. The Lord considers this altar, the altar of incense, the most holy. It's also probably why it's the closest to him. A couple things just I want to point out real quick before we move on. Number one is incense needed to be burned by the priest day in and day out evening and night. It's a continual incense that must be burned um, and must um, go up, right? And then um, just once a year, though, there would be um, this other um, sacrifice type thing that would take place. That only happened once a year, and it was only, the blood was only to touch the horns, not the whole thing. So the altar of incense, burning incense, day and night. All right, now we're going to take this. Remember, we're talking about prayer today. Okay, we're talking about um, the urgency in prayer. Okay, let's flip over to Revelation. Let's go and check out what, the, what John saw in, in heaven. I love Revelation for that reason. Okay, let me move this around so I know where we're going here. That's a good thing. All right, Revelation 8 three and four, or I'm sorry, three, four, and five. Let's read those. Okay, here we go. It says, another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. That altar is the altar of incense. Okay, note that. Oh, I think it's going to say that. He was given much incense to offer with something, with the prayers of all God's people. 
this angel ha was given a bunch of incense and also the prayers of God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. Verse four, the smoke of the incense together with the prayers of God's people went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it on the earth. And there came pearls of thund thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Okay, I want you to picture what's happening here. This altar of incense that is, is burning before the throne of God right this very moment, day in and day out. You know, um, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna rabbit trail for just a second, but it's gonna come back. I think the reason that God made the globe, made the earth circular, I, I mean I don't know this is entirely um, the only reason, but one of the reasons is because somewhere on the earth, it is always daytime. Somewhere on the earth, it is always like it's morning, it's day, and it's evening, right? All over the earth. And how many do you know, how many of you know that most of us, the majority of the population, sleeps at night? So there's probably a not lot, not a lot of prayer activity happening at night. There are some people that do wake up, or you know, if I can't sleep or whatever, um, I'll be up and I'll be praying, but for the most part, there is prayer happening around the clock on the globe. Okay, that right? If it's when it's night in America, it's daytime in China, and there are Christians praying. They are lifting up prayers. What are these prayers? These prayers are um, they're the prayers of the saints. They are going up like incense before the throne of God. I don't know about you guys, but when I smell something amazing, like my eyes sometimes can roll back and I'm just like, what is that incredible smell? It, it stops, like it makes my brain lose concentration of what I was doing or maybe what I was thinking and focus in on what that aroma is that I'm smelling. Hey, are you guys starting to catch on to this? As we pray and we are intentional and we pray without ceasing, those prayers are going up and, and think of them as going up onto this altar of incense that is coming up into the nostrils of God. Okay. And he, you know, it's not like God's like off in some other world and he's just like, well, whatever, you know, I don't know what's going on today. Of course he knows what's going on. But it, uh, it makes him tune in and zone in to the prayers of his people because he's like, there is something precious happening right now. There is a smell that is taking my mind off maybe some of these other things and I am pressing into my people. And I, um, you know, I, I'm listening, I'm hearing, and I'm very attentive to them. You guys, that's how prayer works. That is why prayer is so important. We're not begging God to do something. We're not, um, we're not commanding him to do anything. We are coming in a humble place. We're make our, making our requests known. Some of you are facing really difficult situations. Keep pressing in. Do not stop. Pray without ceasing. Some of us, life is good. And we can sometimes become very relaxed in our prayer life when those moments ha happen. You guys, the challenge today is to feel the urgent, um, the urgency of prayer. Let prayer um, be something that that stirs in you that you don't you don't take your your mind off it. You don't take your eyes off it. You know, if nothing is is real horrible in your life, which Praise God if that's the case, right? Continue to pray for your family. Pray, uh, pray protection. Pray healing. Pray health. Pray, pray provision. Oh, that's a lot of peace um, over them, right? Those are all prayers, and they are catching the attention of God the Father. Why are they doing that? Because you're depending on Him. You're showing yourself in a submissive, humble state, acknowledging that He is God, and you need Him. You need Him every day. Man, and then just begin to expand your vision of prayer, your, um, your, your prayer boundaries, right? Pray for Afghanistan. Pray that um, that revival would take place. Pray for the Afghan people. You guys, if anything, pray for our political leaders 
there is so much backlash that these guys are taking that our president is taking and i'll be honest i don't agree with everything that's going on but you know what instead of criticizing why don't we pray why don't we bless him come on this is a real thing this is real life stuff you know um so many so many issues across the board um with covid with vaccines with um injustices there we have things to pray about like if you say i don't really have anything to pray about i don't really know how to pray without ceasing man get alone with the lord and he'll start showing you what you need to pray about and then as you pray let it be a sweet aroma let it be an incense that is coming up before his throne day in and day out I want to end with one last verse. Um, We're actually going to dive into this a little bit more next week because it is very, very powerful. Let me grab it. Hold on. thought I was going to go completely off camera for you. All right. I love this verse. It's the last part of um, James 5.16. It says, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So the question now becomes... How do we make sure our prayers are pleasing aroma, is a pleasing aroma to the Lord, right? Remember back in Exodus 30, go back and read it. Um, it had to be the right incense. It had to be the pleasing incense that uh, the priests would burn. It couldn't just be any old random thing. It was very specific. And there's a specific way that you and I have to pray. There's a specific place in our heart we have to pray from we're going to jump into that so come back next week and or tune in next week whatever and um and we'll dive into this a little bit further but for now i want you to feel the urgency of prayer and i want you to visualize that it is a sweet aroma when you feel that nudging of the holy spirit what it's doing it's not just going out into la la land it is literally going onto this incense this altar of incense that has been positioned right in front of the throne of god and it will grab his attention man that's so encouraging it's so good so let me pray for you jesus thank you thank you so much jesus thank you for your blood thank you for your sacrifice for our lives god that we we do have um, and in into the kingdom of heaven. We don't have to burn these sacrifices all the time, God, but it is our duty, it is our honor, it is our privilege to pray and to pray correctly, Lord, to, um, to praise you, to love you, Lord, and to let incense just rise before your throne, God. <laughs> that's, that's our job. That's our honor. Man, I pray that everyone that hears, hears my voice today, God, would you just get that visual and see that their prayers are not being lost, Lord, but that you're hearing them, that they are coming up, they're, cra- they're um, catching your attention, and you are watching them. You are being intentional. We love you, God. Thank you for letting us partner with you, God. Stir up our prayer lives. Challenge us even more. Let us pray continually. Let us be a people who are praying continually. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, I love you. Have a wonderful day, um, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.